fortunate I am. I need no introduction. <laughs> I brought some show and tell. I was, um, before I left the house, some of you know that my mother is now 105 and next month will be 106. And I had to pass inspection. Now, let me see how you look, she says. I said, does it pass? She says, oh, you look very nice. She says, now, honey, don't forget. Don't mumble. You have a tendency to mumble. <laughs> so if I'm mumbling, you'll let me know, won't you? I said, honey, I don't think any of my friends think I mumble, but that's okay. Anyway, what a joy to be here. Some of you uh, know me one way. Uh, I'm finally taking my courage and my power and doing what I was meant to do and have been doing for almost 20 years now, um, and that is to accept that I am a reverend and that I will be opening my own center you know, on the 22nd. So that's not meant to be a commercial. Uh, what I wanted to do was to let uh, people start to see the kind of way that I've learned to create and to co-create and to know that everything that you hear from me is not anything separate from you, that we are all capable of doing exactly the same thing, that we're all capable of being great creators, that we all have the same gifts, that there is no separation or anything like that. What I've learned to do co-create is uh, nature has taught me that uh, there's a lot bigger than me out there. And uh, so I always ask, what is it wants to show up or be with me when something like this is taking place? And uh, believe it or not, uh, one of the things that I got was one of the shells that we put into the water there. And when I started focusing on it, um, and as an artist, I always like to know about things before I start drawing them. I'm doing a lot of that on T-shirts right now about sea life and so forth. So I found, of course, the perfect book, and it showed me that um, this shell is a bivalve, and uh, it's only its, its representation is more than a million years old on our planet. A million years old. And um, when it died off and more were created just like it, as nature does, uh, the shell never really died. Just because the animal inside it died doesn't mean anything. As I hold it, it's vibrating very, very strongly. And the beautiful thing about nature, which is what we are, and that's my message, is that that's really all we are is nature, human nature is that it holds a beautiful vibration, but it is so excited because it gets to have your intentions. It's living a whole new life away from the beach right here, and it gets to be dumped into water every single week with your vibration and your excitement, and it's very excited. That may sound strange, but that's what it was saying to me. And then before I left, or well, as I got dressed, I had a whole idea, a whole, my brain had a whole way of doing an outfit. It was all in pinks and whatever. And this morning when I got up, it said, no. I checked in and went, no, it has to be gold and green. And I went, but I had this whole outfit all ready to go. And it was like, no, pay attention. So I'm wearing the gold and the green um, because I've learned to co-create with nature, and that's who we are. We are creators, right? And then before I left, after I got the approval of Mom to leave, I, I then uh, said, well, wait a minute. The flowers want to talk, too. So everybody has something to say, you know? So I went to my flower essences that I create and have been given as a gift, and I thought, well, this will be interesting, and I didn't have a lot of time, so I muscle tested, and four and seven came up, and I took, okay, six drops of this, four drops of that, and I ran out the house. I thought, well, wait a minute. Let me check it out. So four being petunia said, Pattern integration, help to shift your habits, create calm in your new activity. Okay. And seven, which is beach pea, which happens to live right outside my door, says, nurturing joy, understand group support. This is your world space. Hmm. Okay. So what does that mean? It means that we 
are involved with and connected to every single thing there is. We are not separate. Everything here is telling us that there is no separation. We have had the clues morning, noon, and night about the idea. We have laws that are in place. You'd be happy to know that. We have laws and systems that are in place that we don't even have to follow because they're already happening. For the 20 years that I have been integrated with all of this information and blessed, I don't know why, I have no clue. I, I, I'm told I'll know when I pass over, so there it is. But I know that I bring through information just like all of you do. You may not be aware of it, but you are. And that there is only oneness. And all of what I just experienced with you or showed you is all about oneness. And we can expand it so far in integration that we're just not aware of how powerful we are. For instance, when Tress called me and said, well, this is the thing that I picked out, I didn't want to say anything to her, but I laughed because my guidance had said, well, think about the yellow brick road, cat, and how when you click your heels, you already know. And I just laughed. She didn't understand why I was laughing. I said, no, it's the perfect thing. It's because we are integrated with everything else. You are sitting there right now next to each other in each other's auras, hmm, and whatever you are thinking, everybody else is picking up. That's why it's a joy to come here because this is what community is. Community is oneness. That's why this is so rare and fabulous. And when you hold hands and we sing together, we have created the highest vibration there is possible. We have all been creators together. That's what oneness is about. My mother asked me, she said, well, I don't get this thing. What's this oneness thing? It's a little tough living with this. <laughs> so I said, well, Mom, think of it this way. When you had Marianne and I, you know, uh, you felt that there was a family and a unity, and you knew everything to do. And she started to cry. She says, I had no idea you were so smart. <laughs> and I said, it's the oneness, Mom. It, it, you created all of this, and I'm following in that energy field. And we live in this energy field together, and, you know, how I know when it's time for you to get up, or when you walk in, you say, oh, that's exactly what I was thinking. I wanted to eat that. So it's a, it, we're in the same energetic field. We all put out a magnetic field, and it's this field that we need to be paying attention to and responsible for. We've got an issue. I have another issue. What time am I finished? <laughs> There's 10 more minutes? Okay, all right. I just want to make sure. That was one of the things that my brain kept saying, what if you aren't done on time? You know, so, yeah, right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so I want my message to be simple. And I kept asking, I work with a guidance, and I have no idea, except I was told it was Maha Khan, and I didn't like that, so I shortened it to MC. And now I'm understanding that it's a bigger, broader spectrum. It's really an infinite intelligence that is for fully conscious of everything that we are doing. And why do we get guidance? Because they're a little concerned about how we're living our lives. And it does affect everything else. It affects every other dimension because there's only oneness. Everything is expanded out and expands to infinity. So they are concerned. And they do help us. But we were given a gift. And this is a gift that Source gave us, the gift of free will. And that gift allows us to reinvent ourselves every single minute. Think about it. All the things that are not working for us right now, we can change right here, right now. My guidance calls it, they have, they have fun with this anachronism business, they call it now. You're living in the now. The now, no other way. Right now, right here, this is where the change takes place. The brain wants you to do what was before or watch out about what be, was before, and then it brings in the fear of what could be. What we were told, I was told as guidance, I kept saying, well, why, why can't we make this change? Why is this so tough? They said, because the experiment went wrong. 
sorry, but the brain was the one that took over. I said, well, how come that happened? I said, because we felt such a deep soul longing for source that we believed that we were separated from. Some people call that the veil. We are not separated from. I am not separated from the shell or the color vibration or anything else. And everything is showing up in perfection. Everything is in a perfection. We just don't see it that way. It's time now to go, as they're saying, go direct. You don't need to talk to somebody else about it. You don't need to. I mean, it's comforting. But honestly, we can go direct because the gift we were given was the intuitive heart. And the nice thing about it now is science and Non-physical are starting to come together, and I recently was directed to a book by a surgeon where he's now saying they have tested the heart and find the heart is so intuitive it knows way ahead of time before the body reacts. Wow. Think about that. He said, we've sent you, you know, guidance told me, he said, we sent you all kinds of examples of things like this. I mean, people believed in Jesus. Jesus became human. Human then showed that we were, he was a creator. He could create water into wine. He could build more loaves of fishes. I mean, everybody believes this, and yet we don't see ourselves as humans, as creators. And that's what we were. He said, we even got you to believe as above, so below. What does that mean to you? I said, well, that means that everything that's within us is also outside of us. I said, yes, but the outside of you is not what counts. What's inside is what matters. It's that heart that knows everything. And we've been getting all kinds of messages. We had the power of the heart here. Uh, It's all about people saying that, the decisions that we're making need to come from the heart. So I said real simply, you know, I'm real tired of a lot of rhetoric. And, you know, since the 80s we've been, you know, looking at gurus. We've been doing all kinds of things. When are we going to get it? I said, I just want it simplified. And that's what, and when you ask, you get, believe it or not. And a lot of times what you're asking for we're getting it in a different way. And when it comes and shows up, we're not too happy that it came. Right? Okay. Okay. So what he's trying to say now is, look, you were given a gift of the heart, and the heart knows intuitively everything that's going on. So it's really simple, Kat. When you're feeling good, you're coming from the heart. When you're not feeling good, Take a look at the mirror because it's the brain telling you something. It's that what if. What if I can't do it right? What if somebody thinks something funny about me? What if uh, I don't follow the rules? What if I, I did four drafts of what it is? And have you seen me look at it yet? No. (laughs) Because I'm pulling through what I know. It's coming from my heart. It's not coming from my head. Now, what if you missed this word, right? We have got to learn to make that shift. And I just love how they, how they talk about it. It's the shift. It's not about leaving the planet, beam me up, Scotty. It's the shift of moving to the heart, getting it, realizing that when you have made a decision, it's simple. One decision, one at a time, each moment in the now moment. When we make a decision and it feels good, Don't we feel great? Mm -hmm. Then we come up here and and give our joys and want everybody to share it. You're coming from your soul position. You're coming from the message from the heart. You're coming from source direct. We come in to life with the beat of the heart, and they say, and you go out with the beat of the heart ending. That is source, and it's no other way. So the next decisions that you make, and we make zillions of them all day long, the next decisions you make, it's not about, and this is another thing that I learned that I thought was fascinating. This is new to me. I love doing this work because I'm always having to learn. (laughs) And the, the, the next thing that I learned was when you are operating from the heart, we 
oftentimes want to feel better and do better. So we read a lot of affirmations. And I thought, well, I thought that was the way we were supposed to do it, and it would raise the vibration. And he said, well, to a point. But if I say, gee, you know, I want a loving relationship in my life, what that means to the universe is you don't have a loving relationship in your life. Therefore, you will continue not having a loving relationship in your life because you're operating from that vibration. Wow, what? <laughs> All these things that we've been doing and, and affirming. and it's a, But when you're affirming, what you're not doing is you're not seeing a loving relationship. As you see it, then you start asking for it. You, it's where you, it's not where you are from at that time. It's what you are creating in that time frame. And so now, what is the loving relationship? Feel the loving relationship. Feel the arms around you. Feel, the, the, feel it. As you feel it, the heart then expands and expands, and it brings the energy to the brain. The brain tells the cells, and you change. You start to move into change. But when we say, well, I, I want a better house because uh, uh, I don't have the money for it, therefore you now will stay in that low place of no money. So what we have to do is visualize it. And that's what we were given as a gift, is to be able to visualize and to create change. I understand from spirit that it's a literal virtual parking lot out there, outside of our universe, that other dimensions are literally sitting there waiting to come back in because this is the only place that we can be creators where we have a thought and that thought becomes physical reality. And I have to tell you, it's happening really fast now. Everything's very speeded up. If you haven't noticed, you need to pay attention that everything you're thinking is showing up pretty quickly. And that's part of the laws. We attract it in. That's law one, attraction. Law two is the law of cause and effect, that when it tracks in, you are in cause and effect of it affecting others as well as yourself. Law three is the law of vibration. Change the vibration if it's not what you want, if it shows up. You change the vibration, and you do it through the heart by thinking about it, not saying, oh, I want something else. That was the old way. Now it's, I, it's sensing something else. I'm building something else. This is what I choose. And it keeps expanding, expanding, expanding. And that magnetic field attacks and grabs onto that expansion that you are expanding with. That's law. And the fourth law is the law of communication. That every single thing that has been created can connect to you, can communicate with you, can support you, and can be a part of consciousness. So the message and the latest, I'll give you the latest. This is the latest. The word now that they want to get out is vigilant. They want us to be very, paying attention, to be very vigilant about what we are thinking. It doesn't even have to be saying and acting on anymore. Now it's just thinking, that what you are thinking needs to feel good. So that's the simple message. That's the message of what being a creator is about. We create in the now moment. We, our gift is change. Imagine every single minute we can change our circumstances, our experiences, who we are, and it needs to feel good. So the next thought that you have the next conversation that you have could be your next story. Thank you.